Yo, what is up? Thank you for clicking play, and I am on my way to work on a Thursday. It's almost Friday. It is raining like a motherfucker. It is like crazy rain right now. Um, it's not that it's insanely coming down, it's just constant. It was really coming down back on the highway there, uh, so much to where I couldn't even record a vlog. It was just, it was overpowering my voice. I couldn't even hear myself think. Um, so, today's topic of discussion is something that I am doing right now. I am listening. I'm listening to talk radio right now. And I always listen to talk radio, podcasts, talk radio, whatever it is. I listen to it. I definitely do. Um, it's either that or the jazz station. Those two stations are the ones that I have on my, on my uh, little presets here. And they're the ones I most frequently use. And I just really love listening to, um, at night when I come home is when I usually listen to the talk radio, but today it is Conspiracy Thursday on Lars Larson. So usually he's this right wing conservatist, cons conservatist, conservative man. And today is a day that he lets people call in and talk about conspiracy theories. He brings up his own conspiracy theories and blah, blah, blah. So it's interesting for me to listen to that stuff because he actually, for the most part, lets people speak. Usually on his other program, he kind of just listens to them for a second and if he, if they start spewing off something that he doesn't like, he starts over, he starts talking over them. And I do listen to that as well because it's funny to hear a very, very right-wing conservative man get angry. It's, it's hilarious to me, actually. And a uh, few of you guys know this, but um, if any of your parents listen to or watch uh, the Bill O'Reilly, the uh, the O'Reilly Factor, Bill O'Reilly started in Portland. That's that's where he got his start. Um, that, that's awesome to me. I mean, Bill O'Reilly is, again, a seriously right-wing conservative, and I don't really hold a lot of values with him. I mean, I hold a few, but, I mean, for the most part, we have some different some different values. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that uh, he started over here. And then of course we have the great and amazing Clyde Lewis with his Ground Zero program uh, during the nighttime. I believe it's from seven o'clock until 10 o'clock um, Pacific Standard Time uh, that he broadcasts all about conspiracy theories, alternative news that people aren't talking about, uh, he has people call in and talk about their experiences with UFOs or, or paranormal stuff. It is a very interesting program. If you are interested in any sort of conspiracy theories or paranormal stuff, you need to check out Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. It's, it's a necessity if you are a fan of that stuff. If you're a conspiracy buff or a conspiracy theorist, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, yeah, check it out. Just know that the NSA is listening to it as well, and they're listening to you listen to it and what you say about it. Um, so, let's talk about the other stations that I listen to. I like to listen to, um, it's what's called Alternative Rock. It's the alternative station. And what is passing for Alternative Rock nowadays is, is kind of shit. It really is. It's getting on my dang nerves. I mean, a lot of the stuff nowadays is just banjos and fucking mandolins and people in bohemian clothing. It's it's not what alternative rock used to be. And I think that they don't play enough of the stuff that, uh, that really is alternative because most of the stuff that is alternative rock is really mainstream. Mumford and Sons, um, you know, the Black Keys, even though the Black Keys are someone that I enjoy, um, you know, they got all this stuff that's supposed to be alternative, but it is really mainstream. And they don't play enough really alternative stuff. It's really only on the weekends when they go to the, uh, the bottom 40. They go to a bunch of artists that are up and coming, or they go to some of the, the artists that we know and love, and they play some of the other tracks on like side B of the record or whatever. And it, it's really interesting to listen to. I, I really enjoy it. I just, I miss it on the day to day, you know? Fuck you, you piece of shit fucking BMW. Fuck you, you cock munch. Should fucking brake check your ass. I fucking turned perfectly enough time for you to fucking go. There was like three cars in front of me. Oh, you're using your blinker? What a fucking shocker, you piece of shit. Fuck you. 
God. I had like fucking three car links in front of that guy. I have an anger issue. <laughs> really bad. Oh. I just flipped that guy off for like 10 seconds uninterrupted. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> oh man, that's funny though. Oh, I hope this guy fucking follows me. Wouldn't it be great if like we could just turn on Grand Theft Auto mode and just like have no consequences just for a little bit. Just like, you just like someone gets all bitchy with you or whatever and you just push a button. Grand Theft Auto turns on, you can go out and beat the shit out of them, get back in your car and go to work. It'd be fucking awesome. I would love it. It'd be the most, it would, it would be the best stress relief. There'd, there'd be nothing better. Well, maybe weed, but you know, it's frowned upon, so. <laughs> <coughs> well, anyway, let's go ahead and go back to the stuff that I listened to. Um, other than the alternative rock station, I've got 92.3, I've got, um, 105.9 and 97.1. 97.1 I really only put on there because of during Christmas I had to, I had to listen to it all the time whenever my lady wanted to go on a date with me or something. She always wanted to listen to fucking Christmas music. It's just fucking annoying. And during Christmas time they only play Christmas music and it is fucking annoying. Um, I mean from like November, the, the day after like Black Friday on until like December 26th they play fucking Christmas music. And it's fucking annoying. Um, so yeah, I gotta change that. I gotta put that on like the classical station or something. But so I have 92.3 KGON, and that is of course the classic rock station. And they used to be really great, man. They used to just play like the Eagles, Beatles, uh, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, uh, ACDC, Black Sabbath, other names that I'm not really focusing on right now because this BMW guy's riding my ass. <laughs> Fucking cocksucking piece of shit. I hope you crash. Nah, I hope you don't crash. I just hope you curb your rim or something, dick. Anyway, um, yeah, so they used to play all that great stuff. Fuck you, you piece of shit! Fucking ball-sucking piece of fuck! God, I hope you fucking get in an accident. But like a minor, minor one so you don't die. Just like enough to where your fucking insurance goes up. Piece of shit. Honking at me for fucking cutting him off with three car links in front of him. What kind of bullshit is that? What kind of bullshit is that? BMW. There you go. Anyway. So what, uh, what, what passes as classic rock nowadays is shit from the fucking 90s. Like really. I, for the most part, I listen to the classic rock station when I do and I have heard numerous times they play Nirvana, fucking Blink-182, Green Day, Third Eye Blind, <laughs> like that's, that's like late 90s, late 90s, early 2000s and it's classic rock now. And so that kind of coincides with what passes as a classic car and that's another thing that I want to talk about because I always have a couple of different topics to talk about. So. What do you think is a classic car? So for me, a classic car, 70s and before. Like really, there's no way of calling a 90s car a classic. I, I just can't, I can't get behind that. That doesn't make any sense to me. There's digital dashboards, there's CD players and stuff. There's no way that you can call something from 1993, 1994, a fucking classic car. Maybe in like 10 more years, sure, that would be considered a classic. But I mean, it's gonna scare the shit out of me. Cause I'm like, I'm not a classic. But apparently, the, the general consensus about what defines a classic car, something that's 25 years or older. What the fuck is that? What, what, what does that even mean? So like, a 1983 GMC Jimmy, or whatever they are, the, the Sonomas, those are classics. An 87, an 87 Tacoma is a classic. No, that's not a classic. Maybe they mean classic in that way that's not by the age of it. Maybe it's by its influence and it's, it's being sought after by so many people. So maybe something like an A86. 
I guess that could constitute as a classic, even though it's not from the 70s. Chargers, Challengers. Yeah, that makes sense. What does it mean to you? What, is, what does classic mean to you? Sorry about that huge fucking thing with the road rage and the radio stations and stuff. BMW guy pissed me off. I like talking about the radio stations because the radio is honestly the most important thing that you can put in a car. If you don't already have one, you need to put one in there. It, it, it's important. It, it is absolutely crucial to having a car. That's one of the best feelings in the world is getting into a car and listening to the radio. It's, it's fantastic. Listening to music while you're driving, get a spirited drive going, you get some nice music, hell yeah. Get a nice commute, you, you got a long commute going on, you get some nice commentary. Yeah, that's the way to go, man. That's definitely the way to go. I'm going to stop being that crazy guy that's in the fucking parking lot like I always am. And I'm going to go clock in and become a good little soldier. Peace out.